Out of all the reasons for being an inexperienced programmer, this is by far the worst one and is the only one that if left unchecked could and should get you fired. What's up everyone, it's Cody, back again with another video. This time I'm giving you seven reasons why you are an inexperienced programmer and because I'm such a nice guy, I'll even tell you how to get better. Number one, you write overly clever code. Inexperienced programmers tend to write overly clever code and the reason why is not that surprising. When we watch movies that portray a really smart hacker, they're usually doing fairly clever things. As a newer software engineer, you likely assume this is how the actual professionals do things. So you end up spending all of this time making your code incredibly streamlined so it's using the fewest number of operators in as few as lines possible. This is great until requirements for that particular piece of code change. If you are lucky, you are the person that gets to update it. If you are unlucky, another engineer will have to update it, in which case you'll have to explain what the code is doing. Instead of writing clever code, you should write readable code. If that means wasting a couple clock cycles or inflating your function from one line to four lines, so be it. Two, you don't know how to ask for help. As an inexperienced programmer, there's a good chance you don't know how to ask for help. When the code you're working on doesn't work, you'll do one of two things. You'll either immediately call out for help without trying to fix the problem, or you'll rerun the same code over and over again until you give up and ask for help. Regardless of what you end up doing, the result is the same. You'll ask someone why your code doesn't work without giving any useful information. This forces the person helping you to do far more digging than they would like to do. Instead, when you run into an issue, you should first read the error message you are receiving, oftentimes that error message will tell you exactly how to fix it. If the error message doesn't, then copy and paste that message into Google. Oftentimes, the first result will be the answer you are looking for. If you are stuck after trying those two things, then please ask for help. When asking for help, make sure to include the error message in plain text. Senior software engineers can't copy and paste text from images and explain what you have already tried. You should also include information about what you were doing to cause that error to happen if it doesn't happen every time. Along with knowing how to ask for help, I also know how to ask others to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment, just smash the like button, it really helps out for the algorithm. Three. You prioritize completing stories fast. Another thing that you'll do as an inexperienced programmer is you'll prioritize completing your stories as fast as humanly possible. Instead of writing code that resembles a well-written novel, you instead write code that resembles a spaghetti dinner thrown together in 20 minutes. The code you write is difficult to maintain, and when something goes wrong in production, there will be little, if any, clues as to what the cause was. Perhaps worse than that, your code is devoid of catching any edge cases and only accounts for the happy path that happens under ideal circumstances. To get your code out faster, you'll ignore all lint warnings instead of taking the time to understand why they are warnings and fixing them. This isn't out of the ordinary though, as you likely don't take the time to understand the code you are copying and pasting anyway. Okay, I know this may seem harsh, but this is something everyone has been guilty of doing in their career. Thankfully, the solution to this problem is fairly straightforward. Before committing your code, Take a moment to reflect on what you are about to commit and ask if there is anything you could do in the next 15 to 30 minutes that would make the code easier to maintain. Four, you don't prioritize automating tasks. As an inexperienced programmer, you don't realize how much time is wasted on simple tasks that could be automated. This could be from not knowing that certain tools exist or knowing about them, but being afraid to learn about them. There are many things that you could automate as a programmer, but at a minimum, you should be automating three common things. The first would be adding static code analysis tools to your project. The most common ones are known as linters, which will analyze your code for stylistic issues, bugs, memory leaks, and the list goes on and on. The great thing about these tools is they can be added to your code review process so other programmers don't have to worry about commenting on those things. The second would be automated testing that can be run before checking any new code in to ensure that changes don't break existing functionality. It's fairly common for a project to have small unit tests that test very specific chunks of code, followed by fewer integration tests that test larger chunks of code, with a couple end-to-end -end tests thrown in for good measure. If you're spending a large amount of time manually testing your project, you're doing it wrong. The third and last thing you should be automating is your project deployments. Manually deploying a project is inherently error prone as there is no guarantee you will do the exact same thing every time. When you start automating deployments, you'll find that you can start deploying them more often and others can deploy the project when you aren't around. Five, you are full of arrogance. Out of all the reasons for being an inexperienced programmer, this is by far the worst one 
and is the only one that if left unchecked could and should get you fired. Being full of arrogance is by far the worst sign of an inexperienced programmer for several reasons. To start, you are full of yourself and while it might fool some of the other inexperienced programmers on your team, it isn't fooling the experienced ones. What's even more frustrating is any attempt at providing you with constructive criticism results in heated debates, and if you end up being unequivocally wrong, you'll stop the conversation and act as if it never happened. The arrogant programmer also shows up when they become offended by feedback left on their pull requests. They are completely unable to detach themselves from the code they wrote, and thus anything wrong with their code is perceived as something wrong with them. This also shows up in feedback they provide on pull requests as they will oftentimes tell you how something should be done instead of asking why something was done a certain way. The hostility that comes from their arrogance also makes it difficult for them to learn from others because even if they wanted to, no one would want to teach them. The best way to stop being arrogant or avoid this altogether is to check your ego at the door. We are all learning things each day. Don't be upset if you suddenly find you are incorrect about something and approach the world with a growth mindset where you are excited to learn new things. Six you overcommit to work. Another thing you'll do as an inexperienced programmer is overcommit to work. When you are first starting out, you have no idea how many things can go wrong while working on a particular task, so everything seems like it will be easy. It might seem strange, but at a minimum, you should double your original estimate. You may still overcommit to some work, but you'll find you do it far less often. Seven, you underdocument your work. The seventh thing you are doing or rather not doing as an inexperienced programmer is not documenting your work. I won't go too deep into this, but any class or function that has public visibility should contain documentation that explains how and why it works the way that it works. If you find yourself unable to explain what the code does, there is a good chance it's either doing too much or it's just too confusing. Another critical piece of documentation comes in the form of meaningful commit messages. These messages are incredibly helpful for others when onboarding to a new code base or remembering why you wrote something in a specific way. If your commit messages don't explain why the code was added or removed, then you're doing it wrong. There are a variety of reasons why someone could be seen as an inexperienced programmer. These were the top seven reasons that came to my mind, but now I want to hear from you in the comments section. What are the main things you see inexperienced programmers doing? Also, if you haven't had the chance to subscribe, please be sure to do that. Click the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a video like this. Also, we have a growing Discord community, so be sure to check that out. Link for that will be in the description below. That's it, that's the video.